to Sokatoa. Everybody's favorite. <laughs> Uh, I had a teacher once who convinced everybody in the class that this was like an Indian princess so named Sokatoa, and, and it's like, no, please. Anyway. It's just a mnemonic device. It's a mnemonic to device. help you remember. It's very helpful. You know, signs, cosines, tangents, and how they relate to those sides. How they relate to those sides. Because that's what trig is. A trig, and when you think about it, trigonometry is mind-blowing because we have these things that are called rotations. Right? And you can't measure a rotation in inches or miles or feet. You, you measure them in using other types of measurements, like degrees yep. or radians, which we'll talk about a little later. Dun, dun, dun. And yet there's a relationship, clearly, between how much you rotate, how much you rotate and how long a side of a triangle is or how long an arc is. So there's a relationship, but it can change, right? I mean, if I have an angle, So let's use Sokotoa, and let's say this is 30 degrees, right? So just this is stuff that you've all done before, and that's really not drawn to scale, is it? Let's try to make it a l look a little more 30 degrees-ish. So let's say this is 1, and this is 2, and this would be square root of 3. I happen to know that that's a relationship in a 30, 60, 90 triangle. Some of you may remember this from geometry, okay? So if we use, let's say, uh, so, sine, we remember that the sine of 30 degrees would be the side opposite that angle, 1, over the hypotenuse, 2, right? But, wait a minute, what if I had a 30 degree angle but my triangle was a lot bigger? Well, clearly, that's going to be different, right? Doesn't it look like it would be different? Whoa, that's a big triangle. It's a big triangle, but actually, it's not going to Because the angle didn't change. The angle but didn't change. The, the sides. sides changed, but the relationship between the sides will remain the same. And that's the whole cool thing that was discovered, is that these are similar triangles. So if this is one, even if this is 100 times bigger, which it's not, let's say it's 10 times bigger at least, no, it's more right. like two and a half times All right. bigger. All let's say, let's say it's two and a half times bigger, kind of, three times bigger. All right, bigger, we'll go with three. That's three fair. times bigger. Well, then my hypotenuse would be three times bigger. And this side would be three times bigger. Okay. And so the sign of this angle is still going to be opposite, opposite over hypotenuse. Oh, it's which is the same. Okay. So... When you put sine of 30 in your calculator, the calculator is actually not really doing a calculation. It's actually looking at a pre-programmed list of measurements that have actually been physically measured at some time. Right. Those trick tables were all measured by humans. And, you know, in, in, well, maybe not in your day. In my day, we had those trick tables at the back of our textbooks. Well, right, because the sine of 30 degrees in any triangle, in any triangle. is 0.5 or 1 half. The opposite and this was, side divided by the hypotenuse is always a half. Yeah. So this is a very powerful tool that allows us to relate angles with lengths of sides. Very powerful. All right. All right. So I kind of went off on a tangent. Huh. But <laughs> thank you for laughing, Mr. Taylor. I think they were all laughing at but, home, too, watching the video. <laughs> Well, let's come back. So we are now going to put the power of Sokotoa into our xy axis. Okay. Okay, here we go. So if I'm rotating, and we can rotate, again, we'll just call that theta degrees. From this side opposite that will always be the y value. The y value. The side adjacent to it, next to it, will always be the x value. Yeah. And the hypotenuse will always be whatever we want to call this, our rotating arm, our radius, or our hypotenuse. So with this in mind, we can redefine Sokotoa to essentially mean 
sine of any angle is going to be, when I'm in the xy plane, is going to be y. Because that's the opposite side. So that's the opposite side over the r. Because that's r, the hypotenuse. Because that's your hypotenuse. Okay. The cosine, which has always been adjacent over hypotenuse, is now going to be tweaked slightly. We're going to think of it as our x value over your hypotenuse, which is your r. Mm -hmm. Tangent, which is opposite over adjacent, will now be thought of as your y, y over x. So instead of Sokatoa, there's Siri, Kixer, Dixie? Exactly right. Um, How handy is that? Sokatoa sounds better. <laughs> but it's the same stuff. It's the same stuff. Same things. It's the same stuff. Now, did and it matter that you were in quadrant one when you built that angle? Mm, no. So let's look. Oh, that's really maybe where that reference triangle stuff comes it's back. It's where your reference angle and reference triangle, you said it. So throw, draw me, I don't know, let's go with Which 240 you? degrees. Okay, 240, so there's 90, like 60 more than 180, 180. 240, okay. so I'm in the third quadrant here. So let's draw our reference triangle, so I'm going to go up, 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 up to the X, make a nice 90 degree angle there. Now I have to think about what my little reference angle is going to be. Sometimes you see a little theta with a little subscript of an R. Have you ever seen that, Mr. Mm -hmm. Bailey? That's, that's a reference theta, reference, reference angle. Reference theta, because technically your whole rotation is theta. Right, but right. 240. So if this was 240 degrees, so I went 180 plus how much more? Let's see, 60 more, right? Mm -hmm. So my reference angle would be 60 degrees. I'm not going to worry about that all right now. But this, the side opposite would be It's still the y value. Y. It's how many up or down you went. Yeah. Right. This would be uh, x. Still how many left or right you went. Exactly right. Hmm. But now that I'm going to the left, I know that that value would be negative. Mm -hmm. I know that that y would be negative because I'm going down. And my rotating arm, always by definition, positive. always positive. Yeah. So the tangent of that angle, that reference angle, tangent. That's a negative divided by a negative. Does that matter? We. Yeah. 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 It does. The tangent is positive. Exactly. So let's let's put in our sixty just for fun. Okay. We'll get more into this a little later. So that sixty degrees would be our reference angle. And. I happen to know, and if you don't know this at home, that's fine. I happen to know the relationship in the 30, 60, 90 triangle. We just talked about it before. But I'm going to say, just for fun, that my rotating arm is two units long. What the heck? That would mean that the side opposite the 60 would be the square root of 3. Mm -hmm. It's going down, so that's going to be negative the square root of 3. I happen to know that the side opposite the 30 degrees would be a 1. I just know that, and we'll talk more about this later. It's going to the left, so that's going to be a negative value. Yeah. So the sine of 60 degrees would be negative the square root of 3 over 2. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah. So the sine, for example, can you see me over here? 60 degrees would be negative square root of 3 over 2. Sorry. I totally wrote that wrong. What, what should I have written instead of sine of 60? Sine of 240. 240. Goodness gracious. We just yeah. used the 60 used to refer 60 as a to reference refer, angle. Right. right. The cosine of my 240 degrees would be my adjacent. Jason. Negative one over two. The tan of my 240 degree angle would be y over x, opposite over adjacent, negative, negative root three, three over negative, negative one. one, 
And there you go. There's your double negative. Yeah, write that better. Up. Yeah. Just and square root three. So it's interesting. Once you start thinking in terms of X's and Y's, then you can really hone in on when you're going to have positive outcomes for your trig ratios and when you're going to have negative outcomes for your trig ratios. And you'll see a pattern developing right away. So let's look at that for a moment. So if sine is associated with my y variable, and if my rotating arm is always positive, which quadrants will give me a positive sign? Let's see. So if I'm rotating, here's quadrant 1. Wherever I am here, so you went up. I'm going up, so I'm going to have a y. positive y. So my sign is going to be positive in the first quadrant. The sign of sign. The sign of theta. When you're doing sign. Oh my god, the sign of my sign. That's horrible. Yeah. I wish that G were not silent. <laughs> the sign of my... The positive negative. Sign, right, would be positive. Sign is positive here. Where else would sign be positive? Is it, it's still positive. They're just getting smaller. Yeah, it's still positive in quadrant two. Yeah, still positive in quadrant two. So the sign of my rotation is going to be positive in my first quadrant and in my second quadrant. In other words, sign is positive wherever my y is positive. That makes sense. Doesn't that make sense? Because sine is opposite of hypotenuse. Opposite is the y value. It's all linked together. I like it. All right, let's look at cosine. Where do you think cosine is going to be positive? Cosine is associated with my x. Because that's always adjacent. Since x is my adjacent. So let's look here in the first quadrant. That's definitely positive. That's definitely positive. Right, there's my x, that's positive. If I'm rotating over here, ooh, I'm going to the left. All my x's over here in the second and the third quadrants are going to be negative. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, let's see, if I keep rotating... Back to positive Ooh, again. Look! If I have a rotation that ends me in the fourth quadrant, that's my little reference angle, hey, my x is going to be positive again. So, my cosine will be positive in the first quadrant and in the fourth quadrant. So, cosine is positive when your x is positive because that's the variable that it's associated with. Kind of makes sense. Yeah. Tangent, you already touched on this, Mr. Paling. Tangent. Y and X. Y and X have to be. The, s the same sign. The same sign. Yeah. Both positive would work, or both negative would still get you a positive. Exactly. Positive divided by positive would give me a positive tan, or a negative divided by negative. So hmm. I'm looking right here. I'm seeing, oh, sine is positive, cosine is positive, because I have a positive x, a positive y. So tangent so tan will definitely be positive. is going to be positive there. If I have an angle that terminates in the second quadrant, let's see, cosine's negative here. Mm, tangent will be negative. So tangent's going to be negative. Because it's y over x, or it's sine, y over x. sine over cosine. So let's come here into the third quadrant. If I have an angle that terminates in the third quadrant. Like 240 degrees. Like 240 degrees. Uh -huh. Ah! Our x is going to be negative because I'm going to the left. Our y is going to be negative. Negative divided by negative. Negative divided by negative. Ladies and gentlemen, is a positive. So my tangent will be positive in the first quadrant and in the third quadrant. Cosine we know is negative here, sine is negative here. And again, in this fourth quadrant, we know the cosine is positive, the sine we already decided was negative, ergo, the tan is going to be This negative. seems like too much to memorize. Yeah, well you know me, I don't like memorizing anything. Me neither. 
So I like just think, what you do have to know, you do have to know the definitions of sine, cosine, tangent, because that was something created by humans. But that came directly from Sokotoa. But that came directly from Sokotoa. So you really, should be comfortable with. this is all you have to remember is Sokotoa. And then just build triangles when you need them. Build triangles, look at your picture. Trigonometry and, and think. Trigonometry is all about pictures. Sine, opposite, y. Wherever y is positive, your sign is going to give you something positive. Wherever y is negative, <laughs> sign is negative. That's you doing up and down, right? Yeah, okay, up and down. Yeah. Cosine adjacent, that's x, yeah. right? right Wherever x is positive, first and fourth <laughs> quadrants, yeah, cosine yeah. is positive. Wherever <laughs> x is negative, cosine is negative. Tangent is the one where you have to look for the interaction. Yeah. And when I was in high school, believe it or not, I remember thinking this through. Another mnemonic device, cosine, C comes before S in the alphabet, X comes before Y in the alphabet. If all else fails, if you prefer that rather than Sokotoa. But really, cosine, as long as you get the cosine yeah. adjacent X. Linking cosine with X and sine with Y is a really important concept. Then you have all of this because it just makes the logical sense. Sure, it does. Yeah. Very nice. Thank you, Mr. Paley. Thank you. Well,